Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Ovicast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring you the insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. A key step in late pregnancy nutrition for yews is knowing the feed value of the silage being used. In this episode, I'm joined by Damien Costello, sheep specialist, who takes us through the process of silage sampling in a bit more detail. He covers everything from the equipment needed to the process of taking the sample itself. Damien discusses the importance of getting a representative sample and why it might be necessary to take a number of samples, particularly where silages from different harvest dates have been used. We move on to discuss the preparation of the sample for sending and how to make use of them results once we receive them. Finally, Damien encourages anyone who hasn't taken a sample to do so in the coming weeks to know the feed value of the silage that they're using. We start off, however, with Damien highlighting why it's such an important task when formulating a feed plan for late pregnancy. A key step, I suppose, in planning late pregnancy nutrition for yours is, is the first step really is knowing the feed value of, of the silage that's being fed. And I suppose we'd be mainly looking, the, the key determinant, I suppose, of quality uh, in the silage is, is the DMD. And DMD is positively correlated with the energy concentration and also the intake potential of the silage you're feeding. So high DMD silage, I suppose, offers the opportunity for a farmer to reduce the, the concentrate feed levels to the yews in late pregnancy. Whereas if he knows he has lower DMD silages, um, he will need extra supplementation. So, like in terms of accurately assessing that sample, Damien, like it has a big impact on performance, has a big impact on the nutrition plan for that winter. How do we go about getting an uh, accurate sample from our silage to determine its quality? Yes, as you say, it's it's the only way to to accurately um, determine what uh, supplementary concentrate is required. And ultimately, it's a laboratory analysis of a, a representative sample are a number of samples probably needed in a lot of cases where there are different batches of, of silage uh, on the farm. Um, you know, for and then look at for for reliable results, um, it's it's critically important that the sample is taken correctly. Uh, poor sampling technique is one of the main reasons for unreliable silage analysis results. Really, that's probably something we'll come into in a moment. But like getting a representative sample, you can make the sample look very good, but it needs to be. A, it needs to be representative of what's actually being fed to the animals. Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. So if, if we go down the route of taking the silage sample, I mean, just maybe you'll go through what kind of equipment do we need to do it and you know, where can you get it from? Yeah, um, the, the, uh, probably the first thing I suppose is a, is a long uh, silage core or sampler. Um, often these, these are available in, in the local Chagas offices. Um, it's a good idea to have a file uh, handy to, to keep the, the tip of the core um, nice and sharp. It's, it's useful. It makes the taking of the samples easier. Um, but generally, the, the approved labs uh, will provide uh, Ziploc bags and uh, some input sheets uh, where a little bit of information is filled in um, when you're sending off the sample, such as, say, coating date, whether it's from a pit or from bales and so on. Uh, again, uh, these will be available at the local Chagas office. Um, you need a clean bucket um, so that you'll be taking a number of samples so that you'll, this will be just somewhere where you'll, you'll tip in the samples and, and mix them. Um, plastic gloves for your hands, I suppose. Um, and then I suppose you must decide then how many, how many samples you need so that, as you said at the start, that they'll be representative of what's been fed out. But a lot of times now uh, on sheep farms, we're talking about uh, bale silage with a number of different cutting dates taken from different parts of the farm, possibly some of it are surplus bales. And again, all the more important that um, when you're at the time of making these bales and, and storing them in the yard, that you have some way of identifying the, the, the bales that come from the different batches so that you'll know this um, at feeding out time. I think it's so important to consider like there, there will generally be fair variation between um, the different types of silage and farm click for those using bales. If I just like switch over to the for those that have pit silage, if you'd actually take an accurate sample from land, what's the proper technique, Damien? Yeah, I suppose the first thing I'd say here, it's it's important that um, you know, it's 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 gone well past that at this stage now, but you must wait probably at least five to six weeks after ensiling before you take a sample so that the fermentation process has stabilized at that stage. But as you said there, if you're taking a sample from a, a pit that hasn't been opened yet, um What's recommended is that you would take 
three to five um, long core samples, we'll say, maybe going across the, the, the diagonal, across the top of the pit. Um, it would be important into maybe the first 100 millimeters or so at the very top. It may not, as, as you said, uh, be representative of, of the entire pit. So generally we discard the first 100 millimeters of each core. Um, and again, ensure that the pit is properly sealed <clears throat> after the sample is taken. Um, they, again, I suppose it's important to say that from a safety point of view, that you, you, people take due care if they if they if they have to climb up on top of a pit um, to take these samples. Um, you know, it's important to, 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 to exercise uh, safety uh, at all times. Um, if the pit is already open, and again, this is probably very often maybe the case, um, if the pit is already open, um, you can take uh, samples from the face of the pit in a W uh, pattern, we'll say, so that you're getting a good representation of the, of the, of the different uh, layers on the, on the face of the pit. Um, it's important if you're doing it from the face of the pit that you, 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 you actually dig into the, the pit a little bit and don't take it, we'll say, directly from the face of the pit because um, the weathering effects, if you've got a drying sort of weather or, or uh, indeed very wet weather, um, it will affect the, 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 the silage at the very face of the pit. So you, you wouldn't necessarily be taking a representative sample again from the very face of the pit. So again, if you're using a core <coughs> to, uh, to, to, to dig in and uh, to, to discard the first maybe um, 100 millimeters or so on, at the face of it, um, if you're not using a core, I suppose maybe to to uh, to dig away a, a little bit of the the face of the pit and to take the a grab sample from from behind that uh, would be would be the way to go. So essential, it's a fresh sample. I suppose, Damien, what we more commonly see in our sheep farms would be round bales. The process for taking samples, and particularly you know, where you have different batches of bales, and you mentioned there like surplus silage coming off, they might want to be targeted for different feeding. What's the best way of approaching round bale silage for sampling? Yeah, yeah. I, again, as you as you as you rightly say, you you will have a, a different number a number of different batches taken at different different uh, growth stages and different times of the year and first cut and second cut and surplus bales and so on. Um, so it's important that a separate sample, I suppose, is taken to represent each batch of bales you have in your yard. And again, you can use the the core for these um, uh, if 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 the bales haven't already been opened. So you you core uh, through the round edge of the bale, and again, as a with the pitch, you discard the first hundred millimeters, and again, you could maybe take uh, from two or three different uh, bales per batch, so that you could take a core from maybe two or three bales from from each batch to make up your your sample in your booklet. And again, critically important that you, uh, with with the uh, silage tape and and that that it's properly sealed up, it's properly sealed up afterwards would be would be critical. I saw Damien like a lot of stock have gone in over the past some weeks, particularly in cattle, but we're also seeing a lot of sheep housed due to inclement weather. There'll be silage open in certain cases, so there will the possibility of taking a sample of silage when it's actually been fed, which might be a common enough practice in a lot of places. How does that tie in with getting an accurate sample? Yeah, look, it can be done, Karen. And as you say, when, when you get to this time of the year, it may, may be more likely to uh, to be done. <clears throat> I already described there. We'll say the, the, taking the core from the from the silage bales, as as described earlier. But as you say, if you have an open bale, uh, probably nothing wrong with uh, taking a, a couple of samples uh, from from the middle of of, of a bale or two. Um, but again, making sure that you're talking about. Uh, uh, a particular batch that if you if you need to do if you have a number of different batches of bales on on the yard you, you need to uh, you need to open uh, bales from each batch in order to to uh, take separate samples uh, for for each batch. And so, Damien, right, with the sample collected, whether it be from pit or from bales, we're pairing that sample to send it off. Like there's a little bit involved in that as well. Maybe you just take us through that process. Yep. Um, so as I as as mentioned, whether it's the, whether it's the pit or the the bales, um, you take a number you, you take your number of samples. I mentioned a clean bucket earlier on. Uh, that's where your clean bucket comes in, so that you can collect your number of samples in the clean bucket. Um, 
mix them up thoroughly um, and uh, you're, you're aiming for a sample of about uh, 500 grams um, is what, what you need. So you may need to, to take a subsample, I suppose, from your, from your clean bucket when it's uh, thoroughly mixed up. Um, you place this um, into the Ziploc bag provided, um, packing it in fairly well so that you can exclude as much air as possible. Um, and uh, you know, sealing it, sealing it immediately uh, to avoid kind of spoilage of the sample uh, while it's in transit. Um, there's also, generally speaking, the as I said at the start, the labs provide a, an information uh, input sheet that you you must complete. We'll say cutting date and uh, some information like that. Uh, it's a, it's a good idea. It's a recommendation, really, Karen, that you should take the sample early in the week and post it pretty much immediately. So that it'll be very, it'll be a fresh sample, and you know it, it, you're minimising the the sample, the time the sample is in the post. So you don't want to be posting it on a Friday where it's maybe sitting in the, the the post over the over the weekend and it's it's not it doesn't reach the lab until Monday or Tuesday. So take your samples early in the week um, and and put them in the post. Um, as you look, as you indicated there, the information you're providing is very important. I suppose clearly identifying what the sample is, so you understand it, and you can identify it better when you get back the result. It's also important making use of that information when we get the results back. And there's quite a lot of different information contained in it. Interpreting that feed result, making use of it, putting it into a feeding plan, Damien. How do you go about approaching that? Yeah, look at again. It's important, I suppose, that when you get your when you get your results back, and uh, more often than not, you you sent them off through your 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 local traffic advisor. Um, it's important that you discuss those results with your advisor. And we've mentioned a few times there, I suppose, that you, you'll have probably probably have different batches of bales. Um, you know, that has the, there may be surplus bales, or there may be uh, earlier cuts, or or. Um, um, you know, newly receded ground or something like that. There'll be there'll be lots of different batches of bales, but it's important that you discuss this with your advisor. Look at the the number of different samples you have, and maybe for example, you'd be uh, focusing on something like the the feeding the the highest feed value silage in terms of GMD in the in the last six weeks uh, pre lambing, because this is the time when the there's the greatest energy demand is is is, is highest for your yours in, in in these last six weeks. So, as you say, taking the samples are one thing, but it's important that you you discuss these, which you discuss the results with your advisor, um, in order to make best use of of them. Obviously, Damien, look, some may have already conducted this process, but for those that haven't, it's probably something that's timely enough at the moment. In other words, it needs to be done rather than wait for the last couple of weeks, where you really need to know what that silage quality is like. Well, that's exactly <clears throat> that's exactly it, Kieran. Now's the time, I suppose, to do it. Um, contact, I suppose, your 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 local advisor um, for for further information on um, getting the the getting the the, the the materials we discussed at the start, the the, the side core, um, and the, the the bags and the input sheets and so on for for sending them off. And it's better have 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 that have have your have your samples taken properly. Um, have your results in time, uh, in plenty of time for, for planning your, your late pregnancy nutrition. Damien, it was good to have you back with us. Thanks again for your time. No problem, Kieran. Thank you. Okay, we'll have to wrap things up at this point. Again, as Damien highlighted, knowing the feed value of silage can help inform your feeding plan for late pregnancy. It has a big impact, we know, on performance and productivity of the flock for the coming year. So it's a task worth completing. Again, it's probably one that needs to be done in a timely manner, if not already done so on the farm. And don't be afraid to contact your local advisor for more information on the actual process. That's it for me again for any updates from the Sheep Programme. Keep an eye on our Twitter page at Target Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and tune in to our podcast.